All right. Uh, last lesson, we looked at going from the vertex form of a parabola, uh, which is the form y equals a times x minus p squared plus q, uh, to the graph. Uh, what we're going to do today is doing the reverse, going f uh, from the graph or information into the vertex form. Uh, the typical y equals x squared graph is right here for you. Uh, and it, the ta table of values uh, is to the right. Any input value should be squared to give you an output. So negative 3 squared is 9, etc. Uh, some common shapes of the typical quadratic function uh, would be that as I go over 1 from the vertex, I go up 1. As I go over 2 from the vertex, I go up 2 squared, which is 4. As I go up 3 from the vertex, I go up 9, which is 3 squared. Um, what we're going to see happening today is as we move this graph or this function, uh, what's going to change are the values of a, p, and q. Uh, for example, if I decided to take this function and move it, move the vertex uh, to here, uh, the coordinate may be negative 4 and 3, that function now would be this function. It would be y is equal to x plus 4 squared because the vertex has moved 4 units to the left and plus 3. Okay. Uh, if I move that function again, uh, maybe over here, uh, that function now would look like y is equal to x minus 3 squared because I moved the vertex 3 units to the right plus 1. Uh, if I move this back to the origin, I'll show you what happens if I decide to stretch this vertex or compress it. Uh, this now is again the typical y equals x squared function. If I decide to, let's say, stretch this by a factor of 2, That's what my graph would look like. Instead of my perfect squares being uh, 1, 4, 9, etc., my perfect squares are 2, 8, and this would be 18. They've all been doubled. So this function would be y is equal to 2x squared. Okay, and finally, uh, then we'll move into some other examples. If I decided to take this function and make it really small or compressed, let's say, like this, all of the perfect squares have been halved. This is 0 0.5, 2, and 4 and a half, which are half the values of 1, 4, and 9. So this function would be y is equal to a half of x squared. All right, let's look at some, uh, think two specific examples. Let's look at the vertex form of this function. Uh, a vertex of 3 and negative 2 and a y-intercept of negative 7, where I would suggest starting uh, you don't have to, is graph the function. So here's your vertex of 3, negative 2, and a y-intercept of negative 7. So here's what the function looks like. Uh, most of us will be figuring this out uh, algebraically. Others of us will be figuring this out graphically. Uh, algebraically, you want to start with the vertex. So your vertex being at 3, negative 2, uh, which gives you the values for p and q, would make the function start to look like this. Okay, it's x minus 3 squared because it's 3 units to the right, uh, and then minus 2. Uh, the last Mr. thing. The last thing we need to do is to determine the value of a. Uh, for this particular function, the way that we do that algebraically is to use some sort of through point. And our through point that we're going to use here is the point 0 and negative 7. If I substitute that in for x and y, I can solve for a, which will give me the value of a. Uh, as you can see, the value I get for a here uh, will be negative 5 ninths. So a is equal to negative 5 ninths. That means that this function is equivalent to, with values of a, p, and q, y is equal to negative 5 ninths, x minus 3 squared minus 2. That is this function. 
if I wanted to do this graphically, uh, the only difference is to determine the value of A, uh, I am going to, so still use the vertex originally, but to determine the value of A, what I'm going to do is take a fraction of actual vertical distance to typical vertical distance. So what I mean by that is this, and I will do this in uh, green. The actual vertical distance here from the vertex to that point is negative 5. Whereas the vertical, or the typical vertical distance will be what I go over, which is 3 units squared. So my typical vertical distance is 9. So my A value is negative 5 ninths, as we saw with the graphical representation. So this uh, function would be y is equal to negative 5 ninths x minus 3 squared minus 2. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, this function here, I am just going to represent it, actually no, I'll do it both ways. Uh, algebraically, again, we start at the vertex. Our vertex here is 0, 3, so that means that our function looks like this at the moment. You don't have to have plus or minus 0, because it's not moving to the left or right, but I'm going to put it in there anyways and then use some through point. I'm going to use this through point here. You could use negative 2 uh, and 11 if you like, but I'm going to use 2 and 11. If I substitute that in for x and y, I will get an a value of 2. So my function is y is equal to 2 x plus 0 squared plus 3. That's the function that defines this parabola, or y is equal to 2x squared plus 3. You do not have to have the 0 there. Uh, if I wanted to do this graphically, my value of a, again, my actual vertical distance is 8, and my typical vertical distance would be 2 squared, which is 4. So my a value is 8 over 4, which is 2. So as you can see, our function would still be y is equal to 2x plus 0 squared plus 3.